So, you can have a sex channel on British television. You can even have a gay sex channel on British television. You can have a real pornographic channel if you're Rupert Murdoch and the owner of Fox News, purveyor of the wisdom of Glenn Beck. And that's no problem at all for David Cameron's media regulator, Ofcom. You can be Rupert Murdoch at the head of a corporation which stands accused of rampaging through practically every law in the book. And you'll be a fit and proper person, according to Ofcom, to operate a television station in London. But you can't be a news channel that looks at the news from a different perspective to the grim prevailing orthodoxy of Washington and London. If you do, then it's only a matter of time before the great chieftains of free speech, the great champions of liberty who fly three quarters of the way around the world to bomb other people's countries, set them on fire, kill their people in the name of liberty, will find an excuse to shut you down. You see, the British state and its lackeys, like Ofcom, they don't like it up em, in the words of Dad's army. They're happy to cover the brutal suppression of demonstrations in other people's countries. But any news channel that covers the British forces' brutal suppression of peaceful protest, well, they don't like that. They're happy to talk about other people's presidential palaces and all the guilt and all the luxury that they represent. But when a news channel operating out of London talks about the British royal family and how they live and how big their palaces are, well, they don't like it up on. And it's only a matter of time. I knew that Ofcom would try to strike us off the Sky platform, wipe us off the map of the British satellite media, but I've got news for them. We ain't going quietly. I believe that people up and down the length and breadth of this country, whether they agree with our perspective or not, will not go quietly into the good night of government suppression of a television station in Britain. No news channel has ever been closed down by the British state, and I don't believe the British people will go quietly into that good night of censorship. The very antithesis, isn't it, of the good old public school values of fairness and freedom of speech. The US police have been treating their protesters rather harshly also. The Occupy Wall Street movement has now proliferated into more than a thousand towns and cities in the United States, and the US police don't like it because what the protesters are saying is striking a chord with the wide mass of the U.S. population who see their economy on the floor at the same time as their airplanes are in the air bombing other people's countries for which there's apparently unlimited money. Not since Roger Rabbit has there been a more ridiculous attempt at a frame-up than that which was launched by the U.S. Secretary of State Hillary Clinton, the U.S. Attorney General, and the head of the FBI in the week. Robert Mueller, the head of the FBI, said that it read like something from a film script. Yes, pure fiction. The idea that Iran hired a Mexican drug cartel in order to blow up an inconsequential commoner currently occupying the Saudi embassy in Washington is being regarded by experts around the world as almost too ridiculous for words. But the question is, why did the US government go out on that limb? What are they up to? I'd like to know your point of view. 
It may or may not be connected to the trouble the Saudis are expecting in the forthcoming Hajj, the first Hajj, since the Muslims reawoke. Now, as I said last week, we want your videos from Saudi Arabia, from the Hajj. Send them in to PressTV.ir. Goes without saying, these are my views. They're not Press TV's views. Neither are they any government's views. And if you have a different point of view, especially if you are Ofcom, I wish, how I wish, that Ofcom had the guts to phone up now and tell the British people watching this and people all around the world just why they're trying to suppress Press TV in accordance with the expressed views of the British government, revealed in WikiLeaks and revealed in the columns of the Murdoch mouthpiece, the Sunday Times.